Welcome to the Post Sunday app. We're glad you joined us today for this video to talk about the sermon and the applications that we have for it. Yeah. Um, let's see, we have uh, Luke 21. Is that... hey. hey, there we go. Now we're yeah, back. I, I, we're... I'm getting word. It was, it was one of Kevin Martin's squirrels. Was it? That uh, oh, chewed wow. through our power line. And he was in New Orleans last night. So... <laughs> I think Him or the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, well. That did. That was good. <laughs> well, back to the sermon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The questions we we got were really good. We did uh, get some weekend. good ones. And uh, yeah, I I even thought about not doing the post Sunday app this week because we have a lot going on. But mm -hmm. but the questions mm -hmm. were so good, I thought we should tackle yeah. a couple of them. Yeah. So we're we're covering the topic of, of persecution, and Luke twenty one fifteen through. Oh, do I have my verses right? Uh, yeah, Luke um, 21, and it's 5 through 24, okay. but yeah. we look kind of at uh, verses 12 through 12, 24 right. okay. a little more closely, and 12 through 19 even more closely than that. Okay, so. yeah. So we, we're, we're wanting to make sure that we value Christ um, right. as we face persecution. We're, we're showing that, that our, our greatest value is Christ. Um, how do we do that in a world, one of the one questions asking, how do we do that in a world that's very much consumeristic, and it's all about me, how, how do we keep that in the forefront of our minds to yeah. continue to value him? Yeah. Well, I, I think that it, the, the process begins with our salvation. And a person who has placed their faith in Jesus Christ, that we talked about yesterday, is a person who's understood their need for Christ. And they've said, uh, okay, I, I see all these things that are in my life, and I realize that none of these things are sufficient to bring me into relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing greater than a relationship with God. And so we, we turn to Christ and he, be, he becomes our treasure. And I, th I think as a person matures in Christ and grows in their understanding of the Christian faith, it's inevitable that they'll understand uh, more and more who they were and, and even who they still are and mm -hmm. the amazing uh, grace that God has shown them in Jesus Christ for their salvation. Mm -hmm. And so I think if a person isn't growing and treasuring Christ, um, there's a reason to ask themselves whether or not they're a believer in the first place. Mm, okay. Okay. Well, what would you say to someone who says, you know, I, I'm, I'm in central Illinois, I'm, I'm living somewhat of a, a comfortable lifestyle, I don't really think I'm being persecuted very much. Is, right. is there something wrong with me? Should, right. Have I made some wrong choices? Should I be... You know, trying to smuggle Bibles into a yeah uh, into a Iowa country. or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, the dark side. Right. Of the um, yeah, yeah. I I, th I think that the, your first question kind of betrays why the second question isn't consistent. You know, okay. The first question: We do live in a you know fill in the blank culture. There are, are so many things that are 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 part of our culture that are indicative of a, a lost a lost world, a lost culture. And so what's it's inevitable as I live a life that's consistent with the gospel, it's going to rub up against those who are living lives that are that are hostile to the God, to yeah. the gospel. You know, Jesus says, "Whoever isn't with us is against us," and he also says, "Whoever isn't against us is with us." But the, the idea being that um, it, it's impossible to be neutral in the spiritual life, hmm. and so as you desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, you're going to be persecuted, and, and it, it may not be an in ways that you would say, um, oh yeah, I'm, I, I'm consciously thinking, oh, this is persecution. But it's going to be in the comments that people make to you. It's going to be, it's going to cost you in terms of relationship. There's going to be friction in, in people that you want to esteem you. They're going to think you're kind of foolish. Um, so subtle persecution, I, I do believe, is, is inevitable even in a country like we live in today. And who's to say, uh, that we'll live in a country like this one in five years, ten years, five months, and uh, who's to hmm. say that God won't call us into different places too? Yeah. So I, I do think all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted in some way. Yeah, yeah. That's when we we get out the old hymn, "Standing on the Promises of God." Hmm. We don't want to sing that as very loud right. on that promise, <laughs> right? Right, <laughs> right. Wanna... The promise of persecution. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. good. So, what about? Um, Touching on the uh, the end times, you, you talked about that a little bit in the, in the sermon, being an overcomer. Uh, yeah. Anything you want to mention or any question you want to answer regarding that? Yeah, so the, the question was, uh, should I be preparing for the tribulation? You know, if yeah. we're a church that our teaching statement talks about the rapture taking place before the tribulation. Um, you know, I've, I've told people that even though we, we teach that, 
Um, I'm not going to be shocked if I find myself. <laughs> I'm not going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, stop. I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. But, but even still, as we talked about, the, the persecution that takes place uh, during 70 AD and the events leading up to it, I think is a precursor of what's going to happen in the, in the future. And mm -hmm. throughout history, you see, uh, as some scholars have called it, dress rehearsals for the last times. There's, uh, you know, First John, we read that there are antichrists currently in the world. And so even if we don't go through the, the ultimate tribulation, we should be preparing for many tribulations. Mm -hmm. uh, M-I-N-I, -I, not yeah. M-A-N-Y. Yeah. Although, okay. also many tribulations, yeah. M-A-N-Y. So. Yeah, all well, good, good. Well, we hope our, our power stays on the rest of the day yeah. so you continue our ministry. And you know, one, one other thought, if I could. Oh, yeah. If I, if, if, Go ahead. Don't need to wrap, uh, unwrap what we're wrapping Go up. Go for it. Go for it. Someone else asked um, about, I, I'm not sure if I could be ready for tribulation. That's right. Yeah. Good. And um, I, I would just encourage someone with this. You know, the idea of losing uh, a family member due to persecution. We think, I, I don't know if I could do it. Or the idea of, of denouncing Christ and, or, or being told, denounce Christ, or I'm going to kill you right now. And mm -hmm. I don't know if I could do that. I would encourage people with, with two things. Uh, one, God gives us the grace we need at the time we need yeah. it. Yeah. And so what I think we have to do right now is say, I know that I would need to do that. I know that I would need to be faithful to Christ no matter what. Okay. And then, you know, I'd also encourage people um, pastorally, for people who failed to, to endure persecution, you know, I, I, a person says, I, I didn't stand up for Christ with my co-workers like I should have. I, I wanted to get a promotion instead of being faithful to Christ. The early church struggled with this as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions they had to wrestle with is, what, what do they do to the Christians who didn't face persecution and instead uh, caved? And they, you know, the answer was they, they forgave and welcomed back in the church and there was a process of of a person repenting and, and being faithful to Christ again. And I think that's encouraging for us as well as we think even when we are faithless, he is faithful. Yeah, yeah, he's sufficient to give yeah. us what we need yeah. at that time. Yeah. So good, good thanks. last word. So yeah, well, thanks for joining us on the Post Sunday app. We hope your power stays on. And you have a great week uh, doing God's ministry. Take care.